Many people like to say that Antifa, short for anti-fascist, are the real fascists. And I usually say that's not true because fascism has a nationalistic component that fascists are authoritarian nationalists. And now there are some arguments that some fascists wanted to seize territory and be and take over the world and stuff like that. And yeah, they kind of did. But it's really based on, you know, fascism. It's, it's hard to define because there's a bunch of different academic def- definitions, but I don't think Antifa fits the bill. But I can say this. They're as close as we can get to active fascists. They want some kind of authoritarian system. They get violent in defense of massive multinational billion dollar corporations and the government and the federal, uh, the FBI and the CIA and the NSA. So what am I supposed to say? You know, these individuals might not hold the ideology of fascism within them, but they certainly act in defense of authoritarian globalism, I guess, is a probably better way to put it. I don't think they care about the United States. And I don't think what they're doing is going to benefit the U.S. nationally. And in fact, I think it'll hurt the U.S. nationally. But what they're doing is supporting these uh, oligarchy, the the oligarchy, these these massive uh, multinational billion dollar corporations. So the other day in San Francisco, a free speech rally was being put on. Protesters were, my understanding is it was permitted We're upset about censorship on social media. There's no denying it at this point, okay? The New York Post and House.gov were suppressed by Twitter and Facebook, and they are only ramping up their censorship of information. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but you know that Facebook and Twitter censor information in private messages too? I'm not kidding. There was, when the, when the whole New York Post fiasco happened, you couldn't DM someone the story. So why is it then that Antifa shows up and physically beats people saying we shouldn't allow these corporations to control everything? Why? Well, it's because Antifa actually, whether they believe it or not, support fascistic uh, organizations and actions. Some people have argued that fascism is the lucrative merger of corporation and state for the benefit of the nation. And so I guess because nation is really a component of of, of fascism, maybe because they're thinking of a one world government or a one world system, whatever you want to call it, you can't really call it fascism, but it is fascistic. It is authoritarian. And I want you to really think about this. Look at the story. Trump supporters protesting Twitter censorship clash with Antifa and BLM activists in violent scenes in San Francisco. Now, I got a better one for you. One of the organizers, one of the speakers had his teeth knocked out. He's a black man. He was punched and attacked by white Antifa. So they're certainly not anti-racist and they're certainly not for free speech or freedom of the individual. They certainly don't oppose fascism. Actually, that's the best way to put it. You know, it's really funny about anti-racism when they say say that thing that it is not enough to not be racist. We must be actively anti-racist. Anti-racism wants the exact same thing as racism. It's the same thing. From from any colloquial understanding of what racism is, you talk to a regular person, they're going to say, they're the same thing. Now to these individuals, here's what happened. They started saying racism is prejudice plus power. And now that the definition changed, they needed a word for racism because they want racism. This is why they changed the definition of racism. Now they're saying anti-racism to mean quite literally racism, discrimination against people based on race. At first, that was our understanding of racism, and it was bad. Then they said, no, 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 no. Racism is prejudice plus power. Therefore, only white people can be racist. And then a bunch of lefties went, oh, then they said, now let's be anti-racist and enact all of the exact same policies, repeal civil rights law like they're doing in California and call it anti-racist. Congratulations. You've brought back racism by manipulating the left. And they felt right. They walked right into it. These people don't. It's 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 quite sickening to me. I take a look at fascism. I don't think it's fair to call Antifa fascist because, you know, again, they're, they're not all about, about the nation state or anything like that, but they certainly aren't anti-fascist. They're actually pro-fascist. And I literally mean this. They themselves are not, but they actively support fascism. You have these companies like Twitter and Facebook, right? Clearly, these companies want Joe Biden to win, or they live in a world where their worldview is based upon 
Joe Biden being right and Trump being evil. They are biased. This is about the country, not the world. Twitter and Facebook are acting at the, uh, in, 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 in concert, not, maybe not deliberately, but it's like a standalone complex. They do these things that benefit Joe Biden and Kamala Harris for the nation, for the United States. Antifa comes out and is the militant arm that protects them. There you go. The, 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 they use semantics. We're clearly not fascists. We're anti-fascists. Well, look, they're clearly not fascists. They don't care for the United States. But they're certainly going out and beating those who oppose fascism. And that's the funny thing. They take these words on purpose because who wouldn't want to be anti-fascist? Yeah, funny. Let's read a little bit about this. And then I want to talk to you about something really interesting. Bill Maher actually did a segment where he started calling this out. But what I find really, really annoying about Bill Maher is how much of like Bill Maher is one of the lowest information personalities I've ever ever seen. Seriously, Bill, you do not know anything about modern politics. What is this? You like you Google search a story three weeks later and you're like, wow, I didn't realize that was happening. Dude, it's been going on for 140 some odd days. And you're just now like, whoa, Antifa. Incredible. I love when uh, Bill Maher, a week after Covington, okay? So it's like the Covington kids thing happened to the Lincoln, uh, on the stairs of the Lincoln Memorial. And it was like two days later, everyone kind of was like, whoa, we got that one wrong. And then next week, Bill Maher's like, hey, did you see these Covington kids? It's like, uh, Bill, <laughs> isn't your show live? Don't you have Google? Okay, but I'm mean. I'm being mean. Bill did call them out saying that Antifa is about to elect or might actually elect a, a woman who's full on Antifa. And he's, he's calling it out. So I can respect that. But I want to show you a little bit about what happened in, uh, in San Francisco. They say the free speech rally was organized by right wing group Team Save America after Twitter blocked circulation of a New York Post story about Hunter Biden's emails and locked the Trump campaign account this week. Hundreds of counter protesters turned up holding Black Lives Matter signs while others were dressed in black clothing with their faces covered and waving flags for violent left-wing group Antifa. Others wore t-shirts claiming membership of the anti-fascist action group 161 crew. The Team Save America event ended up being, being called off before it even started as violent clashes broke out between the two sides within minutes of people arriving, leaving several in need of medical assistance. Let me, let me, let me ask you, just please share this so people can understand what's happening. We are very, very close to an election. I normally don't do the whole share this video except on my main segments, but this is important. Share this video. Tell people to look at this. It's very, very simple. One group of people says a small handful of oligarchic companies and tech moguls should not control our electoral system. They should not silence the American people. If they're left, right, it doesn't matter. Um, I don't like censorship at all. A group comes out and says it is wrong that Twitter is censoring the New York Post and these various news outlets. But I'll tell you what, many of the people on the left, the tribalist left, want Joe Biden to win and hate Trump. They will absolutely support and defend authoritarianism and massive billionaire wealth. Let me tell you something. You want to know who the real resistance is? It's people like you and me. You want to know why? Bernie Sanders. Is he the resistance? No. He, he stopped saying millionaires as soon as he became a millionaire. Now he says billionaires. Now he says the billionaire class in this country, of which is a few hundred for sure. That's a problem. I believe there's a few hundred, maybe not. No, I think, I think there is. Yeah, I think Forbes did a list. Do you know uh, uh, that Joe Biden is receiving more donations from Wall Street and the billionaires than Donald Trump is? Then interesting. What's the, what's, what's the resistance going to say about that? You're on the side of the massive multinational corporations. You're on the side of Nike and Coke and Pepsi. You're on the side of Wall Street. You ever stop and think about that? You ever stop and say, hey, wait a minute. You're standing next to Wall Street. Remember Occupy Wall Street? That was funny, wasn't it? Trump's got a lot of problems. Definitely does. And I'm not even, I'm not even here to, to talk about that. I'm here to talk about one thing. The right to communicate with, with, with each other. Do you think there ever could have been an Occupy Wall Street if what's, what, what we're seeing now with Twitter was happening back then? It couldn't have. It, Occupy would never have happened. The mainstream media was ignoring Occupy. 
the mainstream media was downplaying it, smearing the activists. And so the activists started using Twitter accounts and YouTube accounts and Facebook accounts, making their own newspaper called the Occupied Wall Street Journal. That's left wing activism that was only possible because free speech existed on these platforms. So here's what they do right now. They say, oh, but this story is bad for Trump. Or I'm, I'm sorry, it's good for Trump and it's fake. And Giuliani, I was I mixed it up. It's bad for Biden. And all of a sudden, these people are like, oh, no, we have to help Biden because Trump's a fascist. Are you kidding? You would stand side by side with Wall Street banksters. You would stand side by side with oil companies, with Nike, with the billionaires that Bernie Sanders is calling out. I love it so much. It's my favorite thing. I want to stress this point. Bernie Sanders comes out and he yells to all the people, the billionaires in this country. And then he turns around and goes, yo, Joe, the billionaires funding your campaign. I love it. That's what's happening. Literally, that's what's happening. And so when these, when these, when these people come out, you say, they say it's a right wing group. Isn't that funny that it's right wing to say, hey, we should have a right to, right to speak to each other. They get violent. So I've had to take out the more violent photos because YouTube doesn't allow it, unfortunately. But the, one of the organizers, teeth knocked out. And so he put up a video saying, Joe Biden, this is what your idea just did to me. And now he tweeted, Antifa attacked me for no reason. And facetiously, I said, this is false. They had a reason to terrorize. They want everyone to know if you speak up against the oligopoly, the billionaires, the corporations, Wall Street and their cronies in the establishment, they will knock your teeth out. These people weren't having a rally waving little American flags screaming Trump and, and, and build camps or anything like that. They were saying Twitter should not be censoring information. Antifa said we will knock your teeth out because you dared to oppose the billionaires. You dared to oppose Wall Street, the, the, the crony corporate politicians who have been in for 47 years. You oppose them. We take your teeth. That's what they said. That was their reason. That's what's happening right now. You want to know who the resistance is? It's you and me. Now, Bill Maher, I guess, finally started to realize maybe he should use Google a little bit. I don't know who he employs, but I am really, really disappointed in the guy. I shouldn't be so mean because Bill's actually doing a pretty good job right now talking about it. And he's got a big audience of many people who are, you know, independent, left leaning and, and, and moderate left. And you can see many of these people do not like what's going on. But Bill, Please just read a newspaper. You know, what's, what's that famous quote from Thomas Jefferson? A man who reads nothing is better informed than a man who reads the newspaper. I, I, I get the point of the statement. But seriously, you can read a little bit, just a little bit, right? You could go on Google and be like Antifa. That's y y y come on, man. So Bill says Portlandia got it right because people in Portland tore down Abraham Lincoln. TDS is a terminal illness, or I should say Trump anxiety disorder, as they actually call it, apparently. But let me let me let me let me let me uh, explain. You have right now Donald Trump or I'm, I'm not right now, but you had Donald Trump saying they're tearing down the Confederate statues. What's next? Jefferson, Washington. Yep. Jefferson and Washington torn down. And then just the other day at a rally in, in uh, Muskegon, Trump, Trump was saying, you know, they come to me and they say, Trump, you were right. And I say, I was right about what? And they said they started tearing down Washington Jefferson. Now they're coming for Grant. Now they tore down Abraham Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln. And Bill Maher's like, I don't understand. <laughs> Why would they tear this down? <laughs> and his guest is like, if you can't tell the difference between Abraham Lincoln <laughs> and a Confederate soldier. Oh, man. If only these people actually did a Google search. Actually, I'll tell you what. Follow James Lindsay on Twitter. Because he'll tell you all about why they do these things. They, do, they never cared about Confederate soldiers. They want to destroy American history and culture. Abraham Lincoln was an expansionist colonizer. Washington was. Jefferson was. The Confederates were. They all were. But they know they're not going to recruit anybody by saying, hey, you want to tear down statues of colonizers? They're going to be like, what? I don't know what that means. They say the Confederates were racist and regular liberals, people like Bill Maher, who don't do any research, go, well, I agree with that. That makes sense. And then once they tear that down, they say, yeah, but this guy, he was a slave owner, too. Oh, OK, that I get They tear him down. But this guy, he was expanding the country that allowed 
for the oppression of indigenous peoples. Yeah, he ended slavery. Yeah, but I mean, come on, wasn't why wasn't stealing the land worse, they say? Oh, okay, then they tear down Abraham Lincoln. Then they tear down Ulysses S. Grant and Hans Christian Hag, and more and more. They just keep doing it. And Bill Maher's late to the party. But I, look, I'm glad Bill Maher's at the party. But Bill, seriously, it's almost like he does no research at all. And I tell you what, I will, I will, I will absolutely bet a large sum of money that Bill doesn't read the news. I mean it. I really do. I think Bill probably gets a tweet here and there. And, you know, someone sends him a story and he'll go, whoa, and he reads it. But here's what I, what, what, I, what I mean. I'm willing to bet that he shows up. He phones it in. He shows up in the morning and he's, you know, kind of hung over. He takes his glasses off. His eyes are all red. And he's like, oh, man. Well, actually, I don't think he drinks. I think he smokes a lot of weed. So he's probably, you know, like has, has a wake and bake and he's all blazed out. And he's like, oh, what, what, what's happening today? And they're like, here you go, Bill. We pulled up these stories and he reads them and he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, I could write a joke about that. Write me some jokes about that. And then he goes and he sits in a room and he phones it in. I think Bill does this. I think a bunch of other left-wing pundits do this. And I think a bunch of right-wing pundits do it too. But it's, mo- it's the TV people, I mean. The people on TV phone it in. They're not paying attention. Bill Maher. Let me, let me, let me read this, actually. It's, 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 it's interesting. They say, Maher took aim at recent protest activity in Portland on the Friday, October 16th episode of Real Time. During a socially distant discussion, CNN senior political analyst John Avlon and associate editor of Commentary Magazine Noah Rothman, Maher brought up the October 11th event in Portland during which a group of demonstrators tore down a statue of Abraham Lincoln. In addition to engaging in other acts of destruction, the protest was promoted on social media as Indigenous People's Day of Rage. Seemingly baffled by the toppling of Lincoln's statue, Marr said, I've got to give a shout out to Fred Armisen. When he did Portlandia, he got it right. But I, guess I'm, but I guess I missed a lot of what's going on in Portland. The mayor there, Ted Wheeler, is about to lose to someone who's proudly Antifa. Bill, we've all been talking about this online for months. How, how, how interesting is it that he's so far behind everyone? Else. You know, I think about this too. I don't really, I don't watch real time anymore. I used to. But he's so late to the party. Like, why am I going to go turn on Bill Maher and hear him talk about last week's news with no in with no, with such a low like Bill is one of the lowest information pundits we have right now. I don't mean that to be mean. I'm saying that it's important to be up to date on everything. You know what I do? I wake up in the morning and I read a bunch of news and I see this literally just happened. The story about the violence and, and that was just the other day. I'm like, hey, this happened yesterday. Sometimes I'll do stories from a couple days ago because I think it's relevant or it was it was glossed over. But Bill Maher, he's like, what's going on in Portland? <laughs> well, the rest of us have been watching riots for several months. Bill was seemingly sitting on a toilet playing, I don't know, Tetris or something on his phone or Candy Crush, seemingly baffled. Maher was referring to the race between Ted Wheeler and Sarah Ayanaron, who, according to one poll, showed her uh, winning by 11 points. Marr called Lincoln pretty woke for his day. Avalon added, if you can't figure out the difference between tearing down a statue of a Confederate general and Lincoln, you should probably sit that one out. There it is. I'll tell you what. This election cycle is not authoritarian versus libertarian. It is not left versus right. It is not communist versus free market capitalist. It is not freedom uh, versus tyranny. It is low information versus the informed. That's it. Because when you talk to the left, They say, we're for freedom. Trump is a fascist. And you're like, dude, you have no idea what you're talking about. It's the craziest thing to me when like Joe Biden is crooked for 47 years and they're like, we need Joe Biden to help us stop Trump's fascism. Do you read the news at all? Now, here's what happens. A lot of these people on the left only watch mainstream media. They only watch TV. If you get your news through Reddit and if you get your news through, you know, it's very popular app, and you get your news for the mainstream media, you don't know anything about Hunter Biden. You don't any, know, know anything about Joe Biden and the Chinese firms, the equity being held for him in his son's name. That's how you circumvent the legality of it, using your son as an intermediary. Keep it in the family. You wouldn't hear any of that because Twitter and Facebook have censored the information. So when people come out saying, stop the censorship, And then leftists show up and say, you dare cross the billionaires? You dare cross Jack Dorsey? We will take your teeth. That's what it's all about. How dare you defy Mark Zuckerberg? You better lick his feet. 
That's what Antifa was saying. So Antifa might not be fascists themselves, but they certainly fight in favor of the billionaires. Certainly not something Bernie Sanders claims to support, but Bernie Sanders also is in support of the billionaires. And maybe the problem with people like Bill Maher and these other leftists is that they're struggling to get information because the billionaires are restricting it and they're too stupid to do a Google search. Google restricts information. You can't Google my channel. This channel won't come up on Google. Timcast IRL will. I made a new channel. They put this channel. A lot of people are like, Tim, why does YouTube allow you to do, you know, without, you're, not, you're not being censored. Well, first of all, I, I, I play by all the rules so I can make sure I can get the information out. I don't show the photos or the videos of the violence and the injury or anything like that. Don't show it. And that's okay. They're like, fine. But they already removed this channel and my main channel, youtube.com slash Timcast from Google. You cannot see them on Google. I wonder why. And I've asked them about it because I know people at Google and they don't respond. They, they have put me on a blacklist. So I tell you what's happening. You and me, you watching this, you listening to this, maybe you're listening to this on, uh, on, on iTunes or Spotify, admittedly much, much, much smaller uh, uh, audience on the podcast platform than on YouTube. But what YouTube is doing, in my opinion, is creating an echo chamber. If you can't search for my content, they only recommend it to people who already are in this circle. That way, the information doesn't get out to the likes of Bill Maher. He'll never see this. Default YouTube users are going to get Jimmy Kimmel. And the New York Post story is going to be censored. And there's still, to this day, a name I can't say on YouTube because that crossed the line, apparently. But there are ways to get the information out. Sharing. That's why I've been saying all the time, you got to share this video. And maybe I should stress that, that point more importantly on my main channel. They have blacklisted this channel from Google. So people will not find the information if they search for it. I always say, just Google search it. You can't. And who is standing guard for the likes of Google and Facebook and Twitter? Antifa. And they will knock out your teeth if you dare oppose the billionaires. So, Bill, maybe you just don't know because Google's restricted access to the information. Maybe you need to actually go out and ask people. Maybe you should take some time out of your day to do your job and inform yourself. As it becomes harder and harder to do, I would say it becomes more and more of an, uh, uh, you, you, there is no excuse for being lazy. But I can respect that he's talking about it. I can. Anyway, welcome to our brave new world. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel, and I will see you all then, hopefully.